Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And as you may know, the Sandbox Test Server is currently in effect, where Wargaming are trialing out pieces of new equipment that may or may not come to the game. There was a second iteration that came out on Thursday, where Wargaming amalgamated two of the previous pieces of equipment from the first iteration of the Sandbox Test Server into one almighty Scout God module, which they are calling Commander's Vision System. Now, if you put this inside... Uh, a scouting slot that fortunately the top tier light tanks do have then it means that you will reduce the concealment of the enemy tanks that are behind bushes by 20% and also reduce their concealment when they're moving by 12.5% and so I was there thinking to myself on Thursday while I was streaming on the sandbox test server what if I take this combine it with the highest base view range in the game, which is on the Sheridan and also the Rheimatal Panzerwagen. Combine that with a pair of binoculars as well as a very good crew, premium consumable and even vents on the tank to get a staggering 621 meters view range. And let's see just how brutal this setup is going to be for making bushes practically irrelevant in World of Tanks. So obviously to test out the commander's vision system you need a map with a lot of bushes and yeah Prokhorovka. Not really any better maps in the game for having a whole host of bushes that just allows the opportunity for the enemy team to be so pesky and hide inside them. Prokhorovka is often won or lost by light tanks who use specific positions and usually a little, of their, a little bit of their own creativity to spot the enemy tanks from safety using the bushes and then eventually what often happens is that the light tank will have to make a hero push through the bushes where hopefully his team is actually not going to suck and be able to spot for her uh, well he'll spot for them and they'll actually be able to hit the targets that they light up however what you're going to see here is that when you use a commander's vision system and you have your your view range maxed out at 620 meters you don't even really need to be too smart just go and put yourself in any bush and just watch the magic happen we just spotted a leopard one at 188 meters and we're talking about a lot of bushes that we just spotted that leopard one through we just did 1471 spotting Usually, you wouldn't be able to spot the Leopard 1 probably until about 100 meters or even maybe possibly even the proxy spotting distance of 50 meters. We're talking about tanks with very good camera rating there. And look just what happens if you see tanks that don't have good camera rating like the Jagdpanzer E100. You might be thinking, are we actually spotting that Jagdpanzer E100? It kind of is a bit of a disbelief for me that we've seen a tank through 250 meters of bushes right now when we're just sitting still and not really doing too much. Unfortunately for us, the Jagdpanzer manages to re-stealth, but just wait, just wait and see. We've already managed to do 3,300 spotting when we haven't even been within 100 meters of the enemy tank. And we're spotting that mouse right now. We're spotting the leopard and in a minute, the Jagdpanzer E100 is going to come back up, and there we go. We actually spot him at 230 meters through all of these bushes. There you go, spotting the leopard. Looks like maybe um, somebody else was managing to uh, add to that, and we only managed to get half of the, the spotting on there. But now, hopefully, you're going to see, yeah, all of the spotting on that Jagdpanzer E100, even though he is 200 meters away, and he's sitting in all of those bushes. This is just absolute ludicrous stuff here. This should not be happening in World of Tanks. You should not be able to spot your opponents through all of these bushes. And that's what the commander's vision system is just frankly doing. It's absolutely ludicrous. It really is. And I can only imagine that this would be absolutely game-breaking if it was to go into, into the, the release. Wargaming seriously have to consider that when you do have good crews, when you do have coated optics, binoculars, premium consumable. When you min-max all of the view range in World of Tanks, it just manages to allow you to do some preposterous things. Do you think that this Jagdpan, do you think that the team had any chance here? Now, how do you counter that? That's one of my big questions. How do you counter a light tank that can sit through 200 plus meters of bushes? And even on the move there, I was able to spot the the FV4005. Now, fair enough, that is a tank that has very poor concealment rating. 
But that wasn't even me stationary with my binoculars. That was purely just about the 460, maybe even 480, possibly even 500 meters view range that we have while we're moving around in a vehicle that has exceptional high view range. Now it isn't just light tanks that would be able to do that. All vehicles that do have a uh, consider, all the vehicles that would want to put on that commander's piece of equipment would be able to, to use it. But remember, there is still the light tanks that are going to be most effective as they do have one of those scouting slots. And we just completely trashed that flank. Now, did we do it by really good use of game mechanics? Did we use it? Uh, did we predict the enemy's locations? Did we manage to use specific bushes to be able to spot them and they made mistakes by actually leaving the big cluster of bushes? No, not really. We just sat in one place, used the right equipment, and we were able to do 7,000 spotting there against tanks that just didn't have a, have a chance. They really couldn't have done anything to be able to counter that. The only possible counter was an EBR maybe coming in. Yeah, what an absolute dipstick. Maybe if that EBR had managed to proxy spot down the west and, and get rid of me, that could have been a possible counter. But remember, by having this equipment set up, I would have been able to spot them at a very decent distance as well. Now, of course, having to be stationary to equip your, your binoculars on a vehicle like this does make it a little bit awkward. But you could see that even when we were moving, we were still able to spot the FE4005 through 200 meters of bushes as well. I just... I'm, I, I'm very worried about this. I'm incredibly worried because getting spotted is already annoying enough when you're in your medium tanks and when you're in your heavy tanks. Heavy tanks and tanks with poor concealment kind of expect it because they've got a little bit of armor to be able to deal with it, right? But how was that leopard going to do anything? How was the leopard going to do anything? They're meant to have fairly decent camera rating even when they're moving and especially when they're stationary inside a medium tank. The Leopard probably has about 20-25% concealment and we were able to just pierce through all of those bushes and be able to see them at a decent distance and they don't have a hope in hell of being able to bounce anything like possibly the Yagpans or the Mouse would be able to. And so I really think that it's time for Wargaming to go back to the drawing board with this piece of equipment or at least... I just... I'm, I understand what they were trying to do. I understand that they were trying to probably make a piece of equipment to give light tanks a use. They wanted light tanks to be able to dig out vehicles that were camping behind bushes. But is it a game mechanic that we really want to have inside World of Tanks? I'm not too sure. It's, it's, it, it, I, I would feel that there's no way to counter it, and that's my big issue. Think of it like this. If you see a light tank on the enemy team, you might know that they're in a specific bush, because usually it's only the specific bushes that actually allow you to have a good view. One of the important things about playing a light tank is to find the important bushes that allow you to then be able to see your opponents as they make as they make plays towards you. Which is why you'll see a lot of light tanks using this bush in particular. From this bush you'll spot everybody who advances at you along here and you might even catch a glimpse at tanks as they go in between the bushes. Really? Even a, a heavy tank uh, would be able to just hide inside this bush and not be spotted in the current meta of things. That would all be gone if the commander's vision system does go into the game and it allows light tanks to just sit stationary and be able to spot you from locations that you don't ever really have a hope of being able to see them. Spotting in World of Tanks is... I think it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I really enjoy it. I feel that... It doesn't feel like it's unbalanced. It feels like if you're cheeky and you do manage to get into the right position. I think there is a, a large amount of risk, but also a good amount of reward for it. I feel that this piece of equipment removes a lot of the risk that would be attributed to it, but just has so much reward, especially in a situation like on Prokhorovka. But there are many, many maps out there like Moravanka, like Malinovka, that would just be absolutely obliterated by specifically one light tank having this commander's vision. Another thing that I really don't like about this module is that you have to become a bit of a specialist with it. And if you set your tank up to have the commander's vision, what happens if you end up on Himmelsdorf? You feel like you're just a worse light tank overall. You you don't feel like you're really going to be able to, to benefit your team as much as you possibly would. And I decided to go over to be able to take out the uh, the chieftain on the enemy team there because he was really stopping my team from being able to get towards the center. But unfortunately, that AMX 13105 who managed to sneak away from us a few minutes ago does shut me down. 
So from here on, my team do actually manage to go on to win. They shut down the two, the Type 5 Heavy, and then eventually after capping for a little while, we see the ST2 go and take apart the Amex 13105 who's sitting at the back of the map. So let's just take a quick look at the post-game stats here and see how much spotting we were able to deal from these bushes in total. We finished uh, second on experience, uh, 1,500 damage, not too bad, 8,000 spotting. And I would consider this was quite an unlucky game that didn't really have too many tanks down that flank. It felt like there were only about three or four vehicles, and we didn't ever really get any juicy spotting after that. What could the enemy have done to be able to counter that? I could have been in any bush. I could have been in any position, and they just simply wouldn't have stood a chance. This has to be thought through, because in my opinion, as it currently stands, I feel that this module could break the game, at least on some of the maps. One thing that I think that will be incredibly frustrating about this piece of equipment as well for the light tank player is do you take this piece of equipment and then just keep rolling the dice and rolling the dice and rolling the dice, hoping that you're going to get on Pro Prokhorovka, Malinovka, Muravanka, some of the maps that actually have bushes, even Stojanki now. And every single time that you decide to put this piece of equipment on your vehicle, you're having to sacrifice something like a gun rammer or vertical stabilizers. Then what happens if you end up on a Himmelsdorf or a Runeberg? You just feel as if you're, you're sacrificing the holistic nature of your vehicle to become specific in one way. But in turn, how would you know that one of the light tanks on the enemy team is not the kind of player who would want to just have the commander's vision system the whole time? You can't account for it. You can't play around it. And frankly, the, the passive scouting in World of Tanks still requires a little bit of awareness. If you were to put this module in, it allows you to spot at such a good distance that that kind of awareness that the player and the scout would have to have would, would completely be diminished. Really, it would be oh too simple to be able to set your light tank up in this way and not really need to know the game mechanics like the back of your hand. Just jump into any bush and just sit there and be able to counter spot a huge chunk of the enemy team. And once again, I'd like to clarify that this currently is the sandbox test server. Everything is subject to change and everything that's on it may not even make it to a real test server and have any chance of actually going into the game, especially if we deliver our feedback to Wargaming about this matter. I really like the idea behind this. I like the idea of making light tanks that powerhouse, especially the non-wheeled light tanks. But this is, this is just too much, at least in my opinion. But I'd be really interested to hear what you all have to, to think about in the community regarding the, the Commander's vision system. Have you managed to get onto the Sandbox test server yourself? Have you tried it out? Were you able to replicate what I was able to do in, inside the game in my Sheridan? And make sure you let me know in the comments down below specifically what you think about this and whether you think that it would be good or whether you think that it would be bad for the game. And that is it for today, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. But if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for another World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And this week, most of you have voted for the SDB1. Wow, I'm really looking forward to this one. It's the tier 10 Japanese medium tank. It's got ridiculously good DPM. It's got ridiculously good gun depression. It's an all rounder and I'm thoroughly looking forward to getting some bounty equipment on it and seeing what it can do when it's min maxed. And if you've never been to one of my tech tree showcases before, they're basically like miniature tank reviews all the way up the tech tree so you can get some tips and tricks. If you've never played any of the tanks, or alternatively, maybe still pick up some, some tips if you've already got all of the vehicles in it. And so, I'm really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.